While the Art of War by Sun Tzu is hailed as one of China's oldest surviving military treatises, and among the earliest military works in the world, many have not had the opportunity to delve deep into its teachings. So, are you curious about the subtle deceptions hidden within this ancient military classic? In the Art of War by Sun Tzu, the deceptions are divided into two parts. First, there's the Art of Disguise. These tactics aim to confuse the enemy and conceal true intentions. The second part involves strategies against the enemy. Behind these wisdom lies a multitude of stories from warfare and military leadership. We will delve into how these ancient insights were applied on historical battlefields and explore whether they still hold value today. In the previous video, we delved into the art of disguise with, when able to attack, we must seem unable. Today, let's continue our exploration by delving into another strategy, when using our forces, we must seem inactive. This strategy is akin to the previous one, both involving the concealment of true intentions. However, it places emphasis on feigning the use of actual capabilities to deceive the enemy. For instance, let's revisit a renowned historical battle, the Battle of Austerlitz, which took place on December 2, 1805. In this conflict, Emperor Napoleon led the French forces against a coalition comprising Emperor Francis II of Austria and Tsar Alexander I of Russia, famously known as the Three Emperors Battle. During the battle, the French forces were notably outnumbered, with 75,000 troops facing an enemy coalition of 86,000 soldiers, including the legendary General Mikhail Kutuzov. Kutuzov recognized that despite his slight numerical advantage, he didn't possess an absolute upper hand. He understood that Napoleon's strength lay not in weaponry but in elevating the quality of his troops through military reform. Consequently, Kutuzov opted for a delaying tactic to exhaust the French forces, awaiting the arrival of reinforcements, and then jointly annihilate the French army. Napoleon faced a formidable challenge as he operated far from his home territory, with logistical supply difficulties that could potentially result in his troops going hungry and losing their combat effectiveness. Therefore, Napoleon could not allow Kutuzov's strategy to succeed. I have previously discussed this type of terrain disadvantage in one of my earlier videos, and if you're interested, you can click the link in the description to watch it. Sun Tzu said, the good fighters of old first put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat, and then waited for an opportunity of defeating the enemy. Does this mean the enemy would foolishly expose their weaknesses voluntarily? No, what Sun Tzu meant is that the enemy's actions inevitably come with vulnerabilities, so one must make the enemy move. Therefore, Napoleon had to let the enemy reveal their own weaknesses. He found an opening in Tsar Alexander I, a person with a strong and emotional character. Napoleon decided to employ a feigned retreat strategy, luring Alexander into pursuing him, thereby creating an opportunity. This battle raged on with intense ferocity, and in the end, the Russo-Austrian coalition found themselves at a disadvantage and decided to retreat. Many of their soldiers fled onto the frozen surface of Lake Sazen, and Napoleon ordered artillery to bombard the ice, causing the enemy to fall into the lake. In this engagement, the French achieved victory at the cost of 8,000 casualties, annihilating 27,000 of their adversaries, effectively shattering the Third Coalition against France. Friedrich Engels assessed, the Battle of Austerlitz is rightly considered one of Napoleon's greatest victories, providing the most compelling evidence of Napoleon's unparalleled military genius. This battle is a strategic miracle, and as long as there is war, it will never be forgotten. A feigned retreat, like the one employed by Napoleon, led to a classic victory. There's a Chinese idiom that describes it, Pu qing gu zong, play hard to get. This tactic has several conditions. First, both sides must have a common goal of winning, second, both sides must be eager for a decisive battle, and third, it's crucial to make the opponent believe in one's intentions. In real life, understanding this principle is immensely important. Those who fall for Yu Qing Gu Zong are often impatient individuals, looking for quick gains. So, sometimes, calm observation and patient maneuvering can be more effective than rushing into action. The easier something appears to attain, the more likely it is to be a trap. Thank you all for watching today's video. In the next episode, I will continue to delve into the remaining aspects of disguise, when we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away, when far away, we must make him believe we are near. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, so you won't miss out on more exciting content in the future. If you have any questions, suggestions, or would like to share your thoughts, 
please leave them in the comment section. I look forward to hearing from you.